Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 57 of the Nindy Nation podcast. I'm Jeff, and I'm coming to you live from the lockdown in Ohio, where I, as well as my family, will be stuck inside for the next 22 days, at least. Whatever will we do? Well... Good thing we've got loads of great games to discuss today. If this is your first time listening to Nindy Nation, welcome! We're a weekly podcast dedicated to all things independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. We're recording episode 57 on Friday the 13th. And we'll discuss all new indie releases coming to the Switch during the week of March 13th through March 20th. After that, we'll stroll down to the eShop, browse the wares, and handpick some of the best deals you can find to keep those Joy-Cons synced. If you're looking for even more Nindy Nation content, you're in luck because our YouTube channel is on and popping. You'll find a weekly video to accompany this and every episode of the Nindy Nation podcast, complete with game trailers and footage of all titles discussed. Let's plays and reviews of everything from hidden gems to brand new, highly anticipated releases like last week's Bloodroots video and the next one coming soon for Bleed and Bleed 2. There's a bunch of stuff out there, so please check it out and subscribe. But there's a whole lot of stuff on the Switch besides the indie games. So for everything else Nintendo-related, check out the rest of our family over at the Nintendo Village, where you'll find daily articles, weekly features, podcasts, and much, much more. Head over to thenintendovillage.com to see everything in one place. And I love talking to all of you citizens, so let's chat on Twitter. You can find me at Nindy Nation, where we post hot deals, hot takes, and uh, other hot stuff. It's hot. Remember when the phrase, that's hot, was a big thing? But enough of that, let's get into the good stuff. To kick off the week, we'll take a look at what games released since our last episode, just in case something great slipped through the cracks. Here's what dropped on the eShop since episode 56. On March 6th, a pixelated top-down arcade shooter called Troubleshooter released for $2.39. Troubleshooter is based around endless waves of dinosaurs that you and a friend can mow down using various upgrades and customizations. In a way, I guess you could say the developer Kobudur Yazalem, who has released other titles recently, is trying to put the extinction directly in your hands. Our next title is by Nomad Games, who released Mystic Veil just last week. I harped pretty hard on them for making what I originally thought was a rip-off Magic the Gathering game, but they reached out to me on Twitter to let me know that it was in fact based on a tabletop game by Alderock. I don't know what that means, but I researched it more and found that fans of Alderock appreciated the adaptation that Nomad delivered, and the general reviews showed it to be a faithful adaptation itself, that while it wasn't very welcoming to newcomers, was very appreciated by the fans. Sorry about jumping the gun on that one, but I guess one big boo-boo like that across 56 episodes isn't too bad. Nomad games were really cool about it too, so shout out to Positive Internet Discourse. Which brings us to their other game, released on March 9th for 20 bucks, called Talisman. And, uh, well, it looks like a digital version of a quote-unquote classic fantasy adventure board game, also called Talisman. And I learned my lesson last week, so I'll just leave it at that. Hidden Through Time by Crazy Monkey Studios is a digital version of a Where's Waldo book for $7.99. And I really can't think of anything else to say about that. Forever Entertainment has been on a kick with these zen-like puzzle games recently, zen chess and so on. This week, they have a $5 game that could be perfect if you're stuck in your house, and it's called Poly Puzzle. This is a jigsaw puzzle, but you're piecing together little polygons instead of traditional puzzle pieces, and you end up with a 3D model instead of a 2D image. I think it's pretty rad. And keeping on the theme that has made up almost this entire list of digital versions of physical leisure activities, Video Poker at Ace's Casino is exactly what it sounds like, but it has some really obnoxious graphics. I guess that's to be expected if it's mimicking video poker, but sheesh, it's a lot to look at. If you want to gamble a bunch of fake money, it's going to cost you a real $7.99. While we covered up through March 12th last week, I've decided to make a change to how we cover this podcast. As such, we're going to have an especially long episode this week because I want to have the whole weekend to work on this podcast for you. 
We're going to add Friday the 13th to the rundown this week as kind of its own thing. We didn't cover that date last week, but going forward, the Nindy Nation podcast will cover all releases Monday through Friday so that you have a nice, simple list to follow when the show publishes on Sunday night for audio and Monday for video. We do rarely see games release over the weekend, so we'll deal with those as they come. But with that, here is the unusually long list of games releasing on Friday the 13th. The first release is by an unknown developer and publisher, which is always a great sign. It's called Yoga Master, and it's, well, a yoga exercise game for your home. It doesn't look too bad, but their $25 price tag is a bit of a, wait for it, stretch. This next one is really breaking my brain. A while back, Rataleka brought Super Destronaut DX to the Switch, and it's basically Space Invaders, which is fine, but that's all it was. This week's title by Rataleka is Super Destronaut Land Wars, and it takes the neon-infused art style of DX and turns the game into a first-person arena shooter, and it is wild to look at. Thinking about Space Invaders as an FPS is one thing, Doing it with an audio-visual brain f- is an entirely different thing, but I'm definitely interested. And you can try out Super Destronaut Land Wars for only four bucks. Speaking of audio-visual raves for your Switch, Translation is a whole nother world of indie game. It's also an audio-visual rave of Neon, but it is built as one part arcade about avoiding obstacles and one part language instruction that will help build your vocabulary and foreign language skills through word association. It might be the most unique game I've ever seen since running the Nindy Nation podcast. Well done, Baltoro Games. If that sounds cool to you, it launches at 7 bucks and will soon jump to 10 Stella, with one L, by Skybox Labs, is also one worth checking out. The trailer alone got me all kinds of hyped for it. It's a gorgeous, cinematic platformer, think Limbo or Inside, but with much more color and a lot of varied environments. The premise is about guiding a girl through end days of an ancient world that's kind of like a sci-fi version of our own. It looks really cool, citizens. This one might be the pick of the week. It also launches on sale for $16.99, and in a week will jump to $20. A new Switch developer brings their first title, Jump Step Step, to the Switch, and Fung Games has created a cool little title that combines isometric platforming with STEM and programming education for only 5 bucks. You'll use basic instructions to help guide a cute little robot to a goal, and if you've seen any of those physical STEM toys that involve placing instruction blocks in order for a robot to follow, it's like that. I have a feeling that parents understand what I'm talking about, but those who don't have kids might not, but look up STEM coding toys on Amazon and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyways, it launches for 5 bucks, and this is a title I might pick up to play with the kids over this extended spring break, as they call it. The ominously named Studio Evil brings us Cider Reloaded, a side-scrolling space shooter that's similar to Defender, Resogun, or any of those other space shooters that have you moving left and right across a dynamic field. The game looks great with nice vivid colors against well-rendered backgrounds, and it includes a bunch of little add-ons to help you change up the experience. $11.99 makes Cider Reloaded one of the pricier games in this category, so I'd recommend putting it on your wish list for now. But check it out, it looks pretty cool. And if not Stella, the title which also seems likely to take the place as my pick of the week combines the gameplay of Peggle with a fantasy RPG story and mechanics. Sign me up for Round Guard by Wonderbelly Games. Now we've seen this approach of blending genres with titles like Puzzle Quest or Rollers of the Realm, both of which are worth playing by the way, but I don't think we've seen the approach applied to Peggle, and I can't wait to try this one out for $19.99. Rack and Ruin is a hybrid action RPG and twin stick bullet hell by LifeSpark Entertainment that looks fun enough, but it isn't necessarily standing out in probably the most crowded genre on the Switch. It's $12.99 and I would suspect it goes on sale soon, so I'm going to add it to my wish list because I love all these types of games, and I'll save this one for an eShop rainy day. If you're a fan of games with the Lovecraftian macabre art style, like Darkest Dungeon, or maybe you're a fan of the gameplay of XCOM, you're probably going to love the new release by No Gravity Games called Alder's Blood. It's mostly grid-based stealth combat, 
but the style is very reminiscent of Darkest Dungeon, and it seems to have some major Souls-like elements that will have you retrying the randomly generated levels over and over. Wait a second, what am I saying? Alder's Blood is a strategy game with procedurally generated scenarios, roguelike elements, and RPG mechanics. For the next week, you can check out Alder's Blood for 15 bucks before it jumps to 20 but it's also launching with a demo, and you can try that right now. So do it. You've got nothing to lose. This next title comes to us by Fantastico Studios, who released Black Paradox, a side-scrolling shmup I really like and recently made a Let's Play for. I would file their new release, though, under the category of... What the f***? <laughs> so... Their new title is called Rainbows, Toilets, and Unicorns, and it's a bullet hell shoot 'em up that actually looks pretty sweet from a gameplay perspective. The graphics, though, well, <laughs> there's something else. It's quite the trip to see this game. You eat rainbow poop, you collect sparkle barf, and pretty much everything on screen is totally cracked out. But again, I really liked this publisher's other releases, and it does look to have pretty solid gameplay. And it's only seven bucks, but I don't know if you're going to want to let anyone see you play this one in public. Well, that's quite the nindy to end last week's releases on. It was already pretty strong, but adding Friday the 13th... Really? But adding Friday the 13th really brought up the rear to make last week's releases pretty strong. There's a bunch of physical world goes digital titles like Poly Puzzle, and a lot of those last titles from Friday the 13th, okay, that's enough. Round Guard, Alder's Blood with a demo, don't forget. And yes, Rainbows, Toilets, and Unicorns all seem worth checking out. But we're not out of the woods yet, citizens. And this week, we're not just covering Friday through Thursday. As I mentioned before, we're going to cover Monday through Friday, which means we'll see the big Thursday drop and the usual decent release list of Friday as we head into the weekend. So without further ado, these are the new release indies hitting the eShop March 16th through the 20th. Kicking things off on the 16th is a 90s-style first-person shooter not unlike Doom that is published, coincidentally, by Doomster Entertainment. This strange realm of mine will have you exploring your own afterlife and mixes in a bit of story and some 2D platforming with the hallway shooting you'd come to expect, and you can try it out for $12.99. And releasing his second title for the Switch, Adam Nickerson from Nickervision Studios ports his twin-stick space shooter called Super Bit Blaster XL and brings me right back to the glory days of Geometry Wars. I love his last Nindy, Ding Dong XL, even made a Let's Play of it on the YouTube channel, and I will be picking up Super Bit Blaster XL for $3.99 as soon as it launches on March 16th. Deep Diving Adventures by Juju B calls itself a diving simulator, but it looks more like a first-person adventure that's just underwater. There's places to explore, traps to navigate, resources to harvest, and just a bunch of stuff to do in a really beautiful underwater world. It looks really interesting, and Deep Diving Adventures launches for $16.99, and a portion of the proceeds go towards saving our oceans. Can't go wrong there. And an indie series that has been on just about every other platform finally makes its way to the Switch on March 17th when La Mulana and La Mulana 2 bring their Indiana Jones-styled retro 2D adventure to Nintendo's little hybrid. Both of these games have been adored by fans for years, and they launch for 15 and 25 bucks respectively. That seems a bit steep for me, so at the very least, I would say throw them on your wish list. We've seen a ton of these zen-like, chess-based puzzle games from Cubite over the past few weeks, and they don't seem to be stopping anytime soon, as Night Swap arrives for only 49 cents and tests you to swap the two knights on any number of boards by any means possible. And if quarantine has you longing for the outdoors, jump on your ATV and soar across some of the sickest jumps and some of the prettiest visuals I've seen on the Switch in Big Ben Interactive's Overpass. Now, it looks really good. It, it looks very impressive and a lot of fun. But just know that this is way up there launching for $54.99, and I'm not seeing quite enough content to justify that price point. 
On Wednesday the 18th, Sometimes You, who is notorious for releasing games that seem to copy ideas from classic titles, releases Explosive Jake, which appears to be an 8-bit Bomberman game for $4.24. And for $6.38, you can have your pick of one of 69 different cars in T-Bulls, Top Speed, Drag, and Fast Racing, which is a racing game that includes a deep customization aspect. I have a feeling this one was a mobile game first just by looking at the interface, and honestly, I've never understood how a drag racing video game could be all that exciting, but whatever. Okay, who here remembers the NES game Solomon's Key? Anyone? It's on the NES Classics if you're a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber, and it's pretty fun. It's a 2D puzzle platformer, and the idea is returning on March 19th with Ghost Sweeper by Seven Raven Studios. It's cute, it's full of puzzles, and it'll cost you five bucks. Here's an interesting one by Rainy Frog. For 8 bucks, you can check out Factotum 90, which sees you trying to get a stranded space station back up and running by remote controlling two maintenance robots through a bunch of puzzles. You'll be standing on switches, steering light and lasers back at targets, and of course pushing boxes through mazes. It basically looks like all of the types of puzzles you'd see in a Resident Evil, Zelda, or other 3D action-adventure game, but they're all rolled into one focused experience. I tell you what, citizens, I can look at one screenshot and tell you when a game's coming up by Artifacts Mundi, the oversaturated watercolors, the still image-like adventuring of games like Myst, and usually based on some franchise or IP that I've never heard of, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what we've got this week with The Secret Order Shadow Breach. It's also 15 bucks, like most of their other games. Go figure. Desatopia is a feature-packed side-scrolling shoot-'em-up by Hanaji Games, releasing on March 19th for 20 bucks, and it has all the things I love in these kind of games. Polished pixel art, fast-moving mix of bullet hell and weapon upgrading, and tons of different ships and routes for significant replay value. It's 20 bucks at launch, so you need to really be into these to dive in on launch day, but this looks like a shmup worth keeping on your wish list, if nothing else. Another title by CFK. Man, these guys are hitting the eShop hard lately. This week's release, Silent World, is a $5 2D adventure about a post-nuclear world that has lost its light. It doesn't look all that great though, so I'm not going to recommend it, but the first time I see a CFK game that looks solid, I'm going to see what this studio is all about. And if you've been looking for your dose of scantily clad underage anime girls, well... (laughs) Look no further, citizens, because Paleontology and Fruit Bat Factory will be happy to take your 20 bucks and tell you a story of uh, multiple worlds, psychology, uh, reality, there's a lot of lingerie drawings, and it's called Seabed. Yeah. We've talked about the It'll Do series quite a bit on Nindy Nation. For those unfamiliar, it's a series of very solid Zelda-style top-down adventures, and the sequel, It'll Do 2, is getting a re-release as kind of a 2.5 version that really changes things up. The team at Ludosity remade the whole game in full 3D, so it looks brand new and very nice. And they've reworked the game so you can tackle the dungeons in any order you want. If you're familiar with the Zelda series, it looks a lot like what Nintendo did with A Link Between Worlds. It kind of sits between being a sequel and a remake, and it looks really, really good. You can check out It'll Do 2 Plus for 15 bucks. And if you like those classic Zelda-style adventures, I strongly suggest that you do exactly that. I also think it's worth the asking price if you're ready to dive in now. On March 20th, Fallen Tree Games challenges you to, quote, Forget the world. Fall in love with this enchanting zen puzzler with over 150 cunningly crafted puzzles and a perfectly balanced difficulty curve. End quote. And you know what? (laughs) I think they said it better than I could. Kudos, Fallen Tree Games. Your $8 zen puzzler called Quell Memento looks like a solid and fun puzzle game that'll really work your brain meat. If you need a break from being stuck in your house, Quell Memento might be just the ticket. 
As usual, Dragius Games has a weekly release, and this week it is Diabolic, an 8-bit slasher RPG that looks exactly like a downscaled version of Diablo, and they couldn't even find a more creative name. If you're in the mood for a $5 Diablo ripoff, this is probably exactly what you're looking for. If I asked you to describe a game sight unseen and only gave you the name Lust for Darkness Dawn Edition, what would you say? Well, if you said a first-person adventure game with extremely good visuals set in a Lovecraftian mansion, then you would have guessed what Sim Fabric is bringing to the eShop for 15 bucks, also on March 20th. But here's a harder one. What if I asked the same question, but for a game called Pooplers? That's right. Pooplers. Like pooplers. Goodness gracious, this game looks awful. <laughs> it's nine bucks and has such a mishmash of different graphic styles, I can't even describe what I'm looking at. It's like babies running around leaving color trails behind them, like almost if in Splatoon, instead of spraying paint, you just sh everywhere. So it's like a real-time poop tactics game. Oh, and of course it's by Ultimate Games, who will drop this quite literal pile of crap also on the 20th. And another one on March 20th, as a quick aside, Doom 64 releases, and obviously id is owned by Bethesda, a huge AAA publisher, but back at the time when this game originally released, it was in fact an indie game, and is probably still the best old school Doom game in my opinion. Most people don't realize that Doom 64 is actually a wholly original game, it's not a port of another version from the PC, and it'll only be 5 bucks at launch. You should totally pick up Doom 64. And finally, we end on a high note because Phlox Studios is bringing something really unique to close out the week with their roguelike first-person arena shooter, Mist Hunter. There's a lot going on here, but you basically have 90 seconds to cause as much havoc as possible. And I assume that also means that you could find other ways to extend your time, as that's usually the case in games like this, but there are hundreds of upgrades that you'll buy in between runs, and it has a movement system that makes the general locomotion of the game look really fun. The overall art style is kinda Overwatch-like, and I'm really picking up what Phlox is putting down with Mist Hunter. I was also surprised to see that it launches for only $6. I would have guessed $15 or at least $10, so go check it out. Looks like a cool game at a great price. 15 games from last week, including the releases from Friday the 13th, and 21 upcoming releases? That's a huge week for Nindy Nation, so thanks for hanging in for a longer than usual episode. And there's a lot of great stuff worth checking out, too. Granted, there are two titles completely devoted to feces, but what are you going to do? This is the land of indies. So much to play, so much coming up. Let's pile on to that old backlog and check out some sales while we're at it. Don't forget, for the most up-to-date deals, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and you'll see regular updates whenever we see a smoking deal or a top-tier Nindy happens to go on sale. This week, there are a whopping 478 games on sale, and even more impressive, 274 of them are brand new. So let's narrow that down a bit into the best games at the best prices yet, shall we? Here are our picks for Nindy deals worth picking up this week. Three Thousandth Duel is one of the best Metroidvania games I've played in a long, long time, and it feels right at home alongside the Game Boy Advance Castlevania titles. I've been working on a video for a while now, but I'm trying to beat the game before posting some final thoughts. At any rate, I highly encourage any Metroidvania fans to pick up Three Thousandth Duel as it is having its first eShop sale and is 33% off for only $10.49. This is a huge game game too. It'll probably take you a good 20 plus hours to complete. My pickup for this week is probably going to be Jamestown Plus. I've had my eye on this super cool western movie inspired shoot 'em up for a while, but I've never pulled the trigger because it's usually 18 bucks. But now it's half off for only $8.99, so don't miss this one. And you absolutely cannot go wrong with Nindy Nation's Game of the Year for 2019. Of course, I'm talking about the immaculate Children of Morta, and it's at its lowest price ever, 35% 
off for only $14.73. It's my favorite action RPG dungeon crawler ever and has such a great story. Check out the review I did over at the Nintendo Village to see why I gave this game 5 out of 5 stars. They also recently added a bunch of new post-game content, so it's technically even better now. Blasphemous is a brutally challenging side-scrolling Dark Souls type game set in a very similar world and has received a ton of high praise. I personally haven't played it, but I might pick it up now because it's at its lowest price ever, 40% off for $14.99. And something completely different, Sweet Witches is a cute, family-friendly side-scrolling adventure that includes a very fun co-op experience for up to four players. So you can play this one with your kids or others in the house who maybe aren't experienced gamers. Sweet Witches is currently 75% off for only $2.49. And a title that isn't all that great, but I've been having a decent amount of fun with recently, is Warlocks 2 Godslayers. It's kind of hard to explain this one, but essentially it is a side-scrolling action RPG with very janky controls, systems, menus. For example, many of the menus still have prompts for a mouse, which clearly <laughs> is just left over from the PC version. But somehow I'm really enjoying this one, and I think it's a combination of of the hilarious story beats it throws at you, and I find the general grind of leveling and looting is great for some mindless fun. Warlocks 2 is usually 18 bucks, which is way, way too much, but right now it's only 99 cents and that feels just right. Before Guacamelee, Drinkbox Studios made a quirky yet definitely top-tier puzzle platformer called Mutant Blobs Attack, and it is well worth the 60% off price of only 4 bucks if you want a fun puzzle platformer that will last you probably a weekend. Video Kid is quite literally Paperboy. It's just dressed up in a ton of 80s pop culture references with one of those huge pixel art styles. It's only 99 cents right now, down from its usual five bucks, and if you like Paperboy, you'll like Video Kid. Just know it's, <laughs> it's really hard, but it's a good time. One of the best multiplayer games available on the Switch is Overcooked 2, and in addition to being bigger and crazier in every way, the sequel added online play into the mix, and you can pick it up right now at 40% off for $14.99. Another title with a Let's Play over on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel is 20XX, which I've been told is actually pronounced 20XTX, but I don't hear anybody say that anymore, so I'm going to go back to the 20XX name. 20XX is a wonderful Mega Man X game with procedurally generated levels and an overall roguelike structure. Sorry, no RPG elements here. I highly recommend and want everybody to try out 20XX, and I cannot wait for the upcoming sequel 30XX, which is currently slated for later this year. But you can get started right now with the original, and it's half off for only $8.99, and that is an awesome deal for a great, great game. Cave Story is one of the most beloved indie games of all time, and is partially responsible for the reason why a spotlight was ever shown on indies at all. Starting out as a Flash game more than 15 years ago, it is now released on just about every platform imaginable. The Switch version, Cave Story Plus, adds a bunch of stuff that's exclusive to just this version, and it's now half off for only $15. And finally, rounding out the week of deals are two of the best Jackbox party packs available. These are quintessential titles for get-togethers, especially if you have a mostly adult group and want something that doesn't require any video game experience, but guarantees an evening of fun and hilarity. Between the individual titles and the party packs themselves, there's a lot of Jackbox content to pick from. But the two on sale this week, Jackbox Party Pack 2 and 3, are the best place to start. And right now, they're both half off for $12.49 and $14.99 respectively. So what are you picking up? Let me know on Twitter, at Nindy Nation. Especially if you have any thoughts on titles from the genres I'm not as familiar with. Your feedback regarding adventure, horror, or visual novel games that shouldn't be missed is always appreciated. Those genres are prevalent on the Switch, yet I'm usually left to secondhand reviews to determine how they're represented here at Nindy Nation. So tell me what I'm missing. Also, do you have any thoughts about shifting to this slightly altered schedule that focuses on release 
releases from Monday through Friday? Is posting the audio podcast on Sunday and video on Monday good timing for you? If it works for you, citizens, I think it'll help drive more consistency and an overall higher level of quality. <laughs> Turns out this podcast and YouTube channel is a lot of work. Who knew? Speaking of YouTube channels, please check out the Nindy Nation YouTube channel where, of course, we have the weekly video version of this podcast, which includes trailers and footage of the games discussed in each episode, but there's also three other kinds of videos. Reviews, which are self-explanatory, Let's Plays like the new Let's Play Nindies for Bloodroots and upcoming Bleed Bleed 2, and then our one-off videos filed under Nindies We Love. Nindies We Love is focused on spending a bit more time on games that either deserve a spotlight or fall into certain themes, like the newest episode which details five indies that you should absolutely have on your radar for 2020. And if you want to broaden your horizons a bit with content about all things Nintendo, check out the rest of the gang at the Nintendo Village. You can find them on Twitter at Village Nintendo, on YouTube, or at the NintendoVillage.com. The team over at the Nintendo Village are dedicated to providing daily Daily news, weekly podcasts and shows, and Nindy Nation would not be possible without their support. Otherwise, that just about does it for us today. Thank you so much for your time, your listens, your views, your likes and shares, and all of that stuff that helps us grow as we spread the gospel of Nindy. We'll see you right back here next week for episode 58, and in the meantime, over on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 57, and whether you're on a beach far from the worries of modern society or holed up in your house due to a global virus outbreak, know that Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find your perfect Nindy so that you can keep your Joy-Cons synced. <laughs>